and she's back. And I remembered what else I was going to say right before I ended that last part. I was going to tell you that on your, uh, that I use a Wacom uh, tablet, and I really recommend that you use one for this. I know some people that use the mouse, and they say it's okay, but I couldn't imagine doing this with the mouse um, after having the uh, tablet. And I've only ever used Wacom products, but uh, I highly recommend them, so even their little bamboo is really good. and. Just make sure you get the bamboo, the regular one, and not just the bamboo touch. You need the pen. And the pen is what I was going to tell you about. I've actually programmed the two buttons on my pen to go to the lasso tool and the photo, the fill bucket, the bucket tool. Um, so one bucket goes to the lasso and one goes to the bucket. So I never have to bring my mouse back over here and select the bucket or the lasso. I just do that automatically with my pen buttons. So I'm switching back and forth between those a lot and that's how I'm doing that. So do that. <laughs> It'll save you a lot of time. I only ever come back to the um, bar usually for the zoom and I think you can do use the zoom on your keyboard but I always keep my hand on the shift and the alt key to switch back and forth between things so I just come back to the, the zoom on the bar. So but that's the only one really. So okay. <laughs> Now we're going to get actually started flatting. And you start out by grabbing your favorite lasso tool, and in this case it's the polygonal for me. And you need to um, block out all of the panels on the page. And I've actually done a page with these two characters, so I'm going to go ahead and match the colors that I used before. So I'm going to go over here and eyedropper my color. and. Usually I would maximize this window, <laughs> but I think that causes audio trouble with this program that I'm using, so that's why it's not maximized, but I th you see, you'll still be able to see what I'm doing, and I'm going to have to zoom out. It's going to look a little funny, but uh, you'll still be able to see. So I've selected one panel, and you start by going to one corner and you drag a straight line down and you click in the next corner and all the way around and then you uh, close your selection and I'm selecting all of these panels at once and I'm doing that by holding the shift key down and that lets you add to your selections or make new entirely new selections in this case and you can do the, the exact same thing and take away from a selection and you hold the alt key for that instead. So you're seeing a pattern here. It's <laughs> shift and alt to do everything. And those are the only two shortcuts I use on the keyboard and that's why I always keep my hand on shift and alt. So write those down. <laughs> so um, that is always my first step is blocking out the panels and then next I do the people the all the people on the page in one uh, color now some people that I work for like to have the characters on the page have the same skin tone and some people do not like that so it's best if you to ask if you're trying to do this as a job and work as a flatter, uh, ask the person that you're working for and see what they prefer. I'm sorry, I'm not explaining things. I'm <laughs> I will get there. Uh, right now, I'm just selecting the people. This uh, particular person that I'm flatting for likes to have all of the characters on the page be the same skin tone, so that's why I'm doing that here. But usually, just vary them a little bit. Okay. After this election, I'll start explaining things. Okay. As you can see, with the past two selections I've made, I've started outside in the gutter area, in the gutter color, and I am basically just tracing the lines of the characters. Now this page is pretty simple. It's uh, there's only that one panel up there that has anything really going on in the background. 
usually you'll have background stuff going on, but still the method stays the same. I am just tracing the lines, and you try and stay right in the middle underneath the lines. And you go all the way around. And then you loop through the colors that you are not trying to change. Right now I'm trying to change this blue color. So as soon as I've made this entire selection and I hit fill, it's going to fill his, the color, the skin color. But I can loop really huge around the outside of the panel in the gray area and it won't matter. I'll show you in just a second. This one's a little detailed. <laughs> More detailed than the others. I shouldn't have been talking <laughs> through the other two. Um, I'll go ahead and end my selection here and I'll cut out those other two parts to show you that other trick. Okay, so see, you just loop around real huge and big and it doesn't matter. And when you fill with the skin color, this blue against the gray is going to act like a barrier, so it'll fill in the blue. Or if you had filled in the gray, the blue would act as a barrier. So you see, you're just um, tracing around the areas where you're wanting to, the color to change. So like here, inside his hair, I have to trace the entire thing because I want it the blue behind him. And here, the same thing. I need the blue color now, so I'm tracing the entire area in between his arm, the hanger, and his body. And now when you fill that, it'll fill it with blue. So this is really the entire process. You are making selections and you are filling them with a color. And the reason you do this is so that you can take your magic wand later when you're coloring and select these areas fast. And I always work this way, um, doesn't matter what I'm doing, <laughs> whatever page I'm doing, I always do the panels, the people in a solid color, and then I will go back in and behind the people I will do the backgrounds, and then I will finish by doing the detail on the people. I've just found that this is the method that works the best for me personally, and it's not how all people work that flat. It's just the one that I like. It seems to be quickest for me and plus I usually like doing people the best. Like the detail work on the people so I save it for last. <laughs> save the most fun for last. So again you see I'm looping real big through that gray color and only tracing the lines inside the blue where I'm going to change to the skin color. Um, I've taught a few people how to flat, my sister and a couple friends, and they always said that the looping thing is what confused them the most. So just watch what I'm doing pretty close and you'll get it. You'll see it more when I start adding detail. But I'm going to go ahead and flat this entire page so you see the whole process. Since it's not that detailed of a page, it's not going to take all that long. It'll still probably take at least a half an hour, but I figured it would help. <laughs> I've done the speed through, the speed, like show it like really fast going through the process to finish the page, and some people will like that, but some people have said they want to see the whole thing, so I'm obliging. And I'm going to try and talk through the whole thing and give some, throw in some tips when I get to the boring parts. <laughs> because really once you get this down, it is just the same thing repeated over and over again. And you'll be able to do it no problem. It, the, it won't even matter the complexity of the page because you'll just understand and be able to do it. And it'll take you longer. Really detailed pages will take a lot longer. But, the method is always the same. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go up here and cut that part out behind her back and arm. And you'll learn where to uh, 
make selections like that. As you practice, you'll see, hey, I could have made a selection there and saved myself some time. See, now I didn't do that here, and I'm going to have to go back in and cut out behind her hair. Or under her hair. So, I have pretty much used the polygonal most of the time. So far, the polygonal lasso. But, occasionally, like here around her hair, I'm switching to the regular. So, really, do play around with that as you're going, because you'll start to save some time if you switch back and forth. And I have one more character to block out in skin color. And now we can go on to the background. So he's entirely in the blue, so I'm having to trace around everything. Sometimes you'll uh, miss a spot and need to backtrack. And you see I just made that little loop there, so that's why I did that. And I'm going to go ahead and cut back here and loop. Uh, loop through here and cut out the part in between his legs so I won't have to do that later. This is all one selection. And then you go back up where I cut through. So that will be closed when I, I finish selecting his entire person. And again, when you're doing this, just try and stay in the middle of the lines. It will keep things nice and neat, and you won't have any stray pixels outside of the lines, which you don't really want. Sometimes it can't be avoided, but try not to do that. <laughs> Okay, people blocked. So that's the first two steps in my personal blotting method. So now I actually go in and I do the backgrounds. And I'm going to go ahead and start with this bathroom back in here. So watch how I loop through the different colors as I go along to see that whole looping thing. You can see I can loop real big into her skin color right there and make the make the close the selection real fast because the skin color will act as a barrier against the blue. So now we get green bathroom. We only have to trace this line in the green and we can loop real fast through everything else to change the floor. Okay, same thing here with the I guess that's molding around the bathroom. And with the sink, you do the parts in the green and you loop real fast through the blue. Flatting is all about speed, so you figure out what things will make you faster. Okay, sink. And if you're flatting for other people, your colors really don't matter unless they give you um, references. If they give you references, try and match them as best you can. Go ahead and make that part of the sink. Okay, in the mirror, you trace just the bits that are in the green. And you loop real fast around the rest. I'm going to do a blue, light blue for the mirror. The top of the mirror dark blue, gray. Okay, and then you've got a ceiling up here, and I'll turn it a little bit lighter green. So now you can see the bathroom is done, except I think that's probably a light right there. And the more you flat, 
the more you'll be able to tell what things are. If you're just starting out, sometimes it can be difficult, and I still sometimes have trouble. If I don't know what it is, I make it up or I just make it a really strange color so that they'll have to figure it out. <laughs> the person coloring it will have to figure it out. So they'll know that it, something's a little off there. Okay, I'm doing the door now. So you can see I looped real big through her and through the bathroom because those colors will not be affected when I fill it in. going to do the molding around the room. Again, loop, loop, loop. Now I guess I do go back to the bar to change my colors. That's it. I go to the bar to change my colors and to zoom in. And again, there might be shortcuts on the keyboard for some of this stuff, but this is the method that works for me and I'm not going to mess with it. Now this book is, there's occasionally some stuff that I'm not sure how far to break down. And I sometimes might go overboard. So, um, on real tech, technical stuff is sometimes where I go a bit too far. And the person you're working for can tell you, um, how much detail they need. A lot of people that watch these tutorials are trying to learn flatting because they want to color their own stuff their own art and that's really cool I think so if you're your own uh, um, colorist then you'll be making things the colors you want them the whole time so no worries there and you'll also know what everything is because you drew it but this uh, art is really good to flat this book it's all bitmap and Everything's pretty easy to tell what it is. Um, that's not always the case. And sometimes the art is not bitmap. And I've been getting a lot of like ink washed stuff lately. And that's a little more difficult to flat. Um, my sister and I both flat. And she really hates stuff like that. She hates um, pencils and like uh, ink washes. Sometimes they can take a long time just because you've got to do so much more detail work but occasionally you'll get lucky and the ink washed pages will be will take a little less time okay, I did a funny selection there I'm gonna <laughs> change the color and figure out what things are okay I think that's a sprinkler but yeah if you do this full time working for a colorist You'll have a ton of different art across your desk, and some of it will be really cool and easy to do, and some of it you're going to dislike a lot, but uh, in the end it's all, it's a pretty good gig, and I enjoy it, <laughs> and I think you probably would too. I think this is part of the window and the line was not finished. Sometimes you'll have to fill in the blanks <laughs> and try and figure things out yourself. Okay. I think, I guess that's a pipe too. I'm not sure what that one is at the top. So that's one of those cases where I'll leave it as is and he can change it if he needs to. See, it's these walls on this book. I never know if that's what, I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. So I'm gonna leave it. I think these are like um, light switches and stuff. So I'll change those. This is the worst panel of the page. Those the people when I get to that part, it's not gonna take much take long at all. 
So as you can see, this is the entire process. <laughs> and you do this over the whole page. So I'm sorry if this is boring and repetitive. <laughs> I'm trying to sprinkle in tips as I go and as I think of them. Um, this art will actually be really good to show you a trick to use the magic wand. That orange looks funny. I'm going to change it, <laughs> even though it really doesn't matter. Okay. Um, yeah, the magic wand. I'll show you in just a sec after I finish this background. I'll, I'll try and find the part of the art where the magic wand trick will work. Um, it works pretty well on bitmapped art, but only art that is really, the lines are really closed. Like everything, all the shapes um, are filled in. So this art is pretty good for that, and we'll see if I can find a place that'll work. It won't work on ink washes, I can tell you that right now. Um, I had a, f a few months ago, I had a Thor book that was all ink washes and some of it was really detailed and I couldn't use the magic wand at all. <laughs> and that's always a little bit frustrating, but it's okay. That book was actually a lot of fun to do. And I found out after a while of doing the ink wash that sometimes it's, um, it, you can get through it faster just because you you don't have to be quite as precise with your selections because the lines are a little bit softer then you can be a little quicker around the selections if that makes sense if you have done a lot of or I guess you haven't done a lot of plotting if you're watching this but if you start to do plotting you'll see what I mean if you um, start to get a bunch of work uh, okay, I'm trying to find a place that the magic wand will work well. Um, bah, bah, bah. Maybe on those boxes. Okay, here's a trick. <laughs> a tip that will save you a lot of time on certain kinds of art. You get your magic wand, and you go to your channels. And you go to your line art channel, and you select that. You gotta make sure that your contiguous boxes select on selected on your um, lasso. No, your magic wand. <laughs> uh, and now you go to your line art and you select the areas that you're wanting to change the colors. So I selected those two boxes. But you can't just do that. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go ahead and select the bed frame as well. Uh, no, I'm not. Because it didn't work too well. You can see there's lines there. Uh, it might still work. I'll go ahead and do it. Well, not that part of the bed. Okay, but anyway, now we've got to, because it didn't go underneath the lines, you've got to expand your selection just a little bit. So you go to select, modify, and expand. And I usually do it by two pixels. Sometimes three. In this case, two looks like it's going to work out really well. And now you can go back to your regular, regular <laughs> um, layer. Go back to your layer, and you can change the color. And the, the, um, your selection is now underneath the line, so when you change the color, you didn't have to actually select that all by hand. You did it by the magic wand. But when you do that, it sometimes leaves holes in your line art, and that you do not want. You want all your colors to mesh right up against the next color. So what I do is I um, quickly make a selection around the areas where there are holes and fill it with that color. So now you can't tell that I use the magic wand. See when you zoom out all my colors there are no holes anywhere. And I'll show you that again at the end so you, you'll see it a little better. But that's the reason that we do the looping really big through the other colors uh, thing. That's what gives you the no holes anywhere. Some people use the magic wand for everything on the page that they can get away with using it and they leave the holes there and that's not a good thing. <laughs> um, it can lead to some trouble in um, the printing process, but I don't think it's as big of an issue now, but still it's better to do it the right way, I think. 
And this is the way that I was taught, and so it's the right way. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. Okay. Select, select, select. I actually think that is not the correct selection. Okay, so now I'm using that trick of holding down Alt and taking away from a selection. Okay, because I just wanted the desk and I had accidentally selected underneath the desk. I'm going to make that a blue metal desk. And I don't know what that is, so I'm going to make it the same color as the desk. And again, just pay attention to where I'm looping through things. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but there are a couple ways to close your selection. I don't think I went over that. Um, you start your selection and then you got to, of course, close it so you can fill it with color. Um, the first, the way that I do it is you can double click. So you start your selection and you make your, in this case, a square. And now I can double click and it's my, the end of the line is going to find the beginning. So wherever you are, it's going to find the beginning. So sometimes you got to be careful or it will cut your whole selection in half. Like if I went here and here, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I can get it to do it right at this moment. But anyway, if I close the selection, uh, you'll, it would have cut a line right through. It, you'll see it when it happens to you. And when it does happen, it's really annoying. But that's the first way to close your selection. The second way is you start your selection. And you go ahead and make your entire selection. And you work your way back to the beginning. And when you're back at the beginning, you bring your selections together and a little circle will appear on your icon and just click and your selection will close. I usually do the double click because it's a little bit faster, just as long as you're careful and not to close it early so you don't have that stupid cut it in half thing that I was describing. <laughs> okay, I think I'm almost done with this background. I think these might be lights or something, so I'm going to go ahead and change them. Again, he'll fix it if it's incorrect. Okay. Now I think all I need to do on that background is change the floor color. So there are no lines there. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do I'll change the wall color instead. Looks a little funny. Change it blue. <laughs> okay. And that is background complete on this page, except I'm going to go ahead and do these lights right here. I guess they're lights. Do the one here. And you'll see that I make these weird little <laughs> triangle selections all over the place when I'm working. I just do that, I don't know, it's a habit. And I do that when I need to go grab the lasso or something, and rather than uh, deselecting an area, I just make a little quick triangle and start over wherever I'm going. I don't know, it's weird. I don't really notice it until someone's watching me and they're like, why did you do that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, now the background is complete. I think I'll do this area behind her a different color because it's the part of the doorway there. Or it's behind her in the doorway. Hey, now another thing, oops, I made the panel yellow, <laughs> okay, so we are getting really close to being done, 
it just the people left. But one thing I'm going to show you is that I've started to do one thing, one reason I do the people like this, I block out the people and then I do the background, is because I've started for myself and a couple of the other people that I fought for, I make a channel with the figures uh, in it, just the figures themselves. Uh, I'll go ahead and select the clothes he's holding and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, a while back, it was like the first year that I was flatting, someone told me to flat for them that way. And I forgot about it for a year or two, and then when I started coloring more myself, I start I remembered it, and I thought, hey, that might come in handy. <laughs> and so I started doing it for myself, and then I asked a couple of the people that I work for if they would like me to do it for them, and they said, sure. And so that's what I do now. But I'll show you in just a second what it is. That you, I'm just not rambling on about it. Okay, hanger. Ooh, zoomed in too far. And you, another thing, zooming in, you zoom in as far as you need to to be able to see the page. So don't let anyone tell you how far you can zoom in. Uh, right now I'm at 200%, but it really just depends on what uh, size the file you're working on is and how detailed it is. Because sometimes they can get crazy with the detail and you gotta zoom in real close to get catch everything. Okay, now this is the step. This would be step four, I guess. Uh, panels, people, background. Yeah. So you take your magic wand and you select the people. You, know, you uncheck contagious. And then it will select all the people on the page because they're all the same skin tone. If you've done them different skin tones, just hit shift and um, select all the skin tones on the page. And now um, I've set up an action to do this for me, but I'll go ahead and show you what it is. You will go and you make a new channel and you fill the, you invert the selection and you fill the background with black so that when the alpha channel, I will rename it, I always name it figures, when it's selected then only the figures are selected. So when you're here on your um, page and you need to select the people real fast to like, uh, I don't know, do something to them individually, um, you'll go to go here and do your selection. And then when you come back, they're selected. And you can also invert the selection and just um, affect the background. So it lets you basically do, when you're coloring, do things to just the people or just the background. Like if you wanted to layer in some highlights or lights or whatever you're doing, they let you do that. So that's my step four, usually when I'm coloring. I mean flatting. Okay, now we're going to finish. And to do that, I'm going to grab the colors from this other page and start working on the people. And I usually just go panel by panel and finish them up. And it is important to note when you're flatting that the colors need to match through the entire page. So this girl, all of her hair is going to need to be the same color in every panel. And I personally do that with every, I try and do that with every page of a book that I'm doing for the, a certain color. It's just in case, um, oh, I'm on the wrong. <laughs> I wasn't on the, the layer. Just so that uh, it's consistent and I don't know, that's just what I do. Some people don't care and you can do, uh, as long as the colors are consistent through the page, you can do whatever you want on the other pages. I think it just makes it easier this way if they all match. I don't think that's her hair color. I think I must have something set on my 
there's something amiss. No, oh, I had the wrong color. Oh, I selected her barrette color. Okay. And, um, for teeth, I do those. Teeth and eyes, I do the same color throughout the page. I don't do them quite white, just a off-white color. Um, just in case the, the colors comes in, if they come in and, um, change the gutters, I accidentally pushed alt. So it didn't make a selection, if you were wondering what happened. Um, if they change the gutters to white, the eye color and teeth color won't be solid white. So it, they won't select the eyes and teeth when they're trying to select the gutters. So that's why I do that. Um, I don't know if that's hair or oops, outfit. I think it's her color. Grab her lip color. And again, I'm using the the alt key to grab the eyedropper when I'm using the bucket. Okay, I have a list of things I was going to try and cover <laughs> during uh, this tutorial, so I'm going to uh, check it. Okay, oh, there's one <laughs> thing that I is very important. I usually tell it to people as like the very first thing. Um, save often. That is tip number one. Biggest thing. Um, it, <laughs> Photoshop has a tendency to be mean to me and if you don't save often it will freeze or do something and you'll lose all of your hard work and you'll just be so upset. I can remember several times that it was just awful. Um, when I was first starting out especially, I had to redo um, a lot of work <laughs> just because I would forget to save and at the time my computer was not um, the best around. and everything froze on it and so it was just not good so and I think this holds true for any computer Photoshop um, has little issues and it can just crash on you for no apparent reason and uh, you can lose an hour's worth of work or whatever you were doing so save 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 um, I try and remember to at least save after every step that I do so like the panels and then the people and then the backgrounds and then save the final but I tend to save more often than that even and I used to work panel to panel and some people still like to do that and so if you were going to work that way I would suggest saving after every panel so it really just depends on um, how you like to work Everyone's different, and you don't have to copy what I do exactly. This is just the method that I found works the best for me, personally. So, just figure out your ideal method and work from there. And, I'll consult my list once again. Oh, okay. One more tip. <laughs> that I was going to talk about is a program that I use called Dropbox and I've recommended this to several people and I still heartily recommend it. Uh, it's a program that will um, you can share files with people and that's a pretty cool feature but that's not the reason that I recommend it even though I do use it to share files and several of the colors that I work for uh, get files to me through Dropbox. But I recommend it because even the free version of Dropbox will um, basically act as a oops, <laughs> a backup for your files. So it keeps a of your um, like this file that I'm working on, there's a copy on my hard drive 
and there is also a copy on the Dropbox servers, their website. So if something crazy were to happen and my hard drive were just to go kaput right this minute, this page and every other page that I've worked on recently is backed up on Dropbox. So I will not have lost all of this hard work because of a faulty hard drive. Um, so if you have no other form of backup, this is something I recommend. And I go ahead and pay for the um, 50 gigs of space. I forget how much it is a month, but I've found that it's worth it because I keep my flatting work as well as my coloring work that I'm, the things that I'm working on like right now. I keep them in there just in case. And I also have Carbonite backup for the other just in case <laughs> things. But Dropbox I recommend for sure for flatting. Because the flatting files really don't take up that much space. Uh, and yeah, so go check it out. I think it's Dropbox.com, and they have a free version. So it's cool to be able to share files with people, but it's even cooler to know that you're not going to lose some work if something happens to your hard drive. And that's why I say Dropbox, Dropbox. Um, it also will keep different versions of the file for a while. I can't remember how long, but if something happens, this has happened when I've colored, I'll accidentally flatten the file or something like that and not save another copy, even though I really should. <laughs> I usually keep them pretty well separated, but occasionally it happens. Like, um, So if that happens and I needed to go in and make a correction, if I didn't have another uh, version of the file, a previous version of the file, then I would have to um, recolor the entire page. And Dropbox has saved me a couple of times because you can go back in on the website and say, look up that file and say, there's a little, little option for previous versions. And you can see when you saved it and get the version uh, before you can uh, before you flattened it, you can go ahead and restore that version. Or before you messed it all up, <laughs> or I messed it all up, in this case, you can go back and um, get that file and save yourself some heartache and extra work. So, get yourself some Dropbox. And I think those were the major things that I wanted to cover, but I will try and think of some more while I'm here working, because this is just me doing the exact same thing I've already told you how to do. Still, it hasn't taken that long. Oops. Oh, I forgot one. I was going to show you how to use the pencil tool. I'll go ahead and do it on her eyes here. Um, grab that blue. I usually keep my pencil tool at set at two to three pixels, and then you just color it in. That's a little bit bigger area than I usually do, but you see, and you're it'll still have the sharp edges that you need. If you'd used the brush, it would have the soft feathered edges that would leave halos everywhere and you'd get in trouble. <laughs> so that is what the pencil is for. Some people, I think, actually flat the entire page using the pencil. I think that's another thing that would drive me crazy. Um, I think they like outline every every object and everything and they like fill it in with the color. I don't know exactly. I have never <laughs> worked that way. I'm going to have to zoom in a little on her. Okay. But yeah, this is not the only method for flatting. I've seen several and this is just the one that works for me and I do not want to have to learn another one, so, <laughs> um, again, figure out what you like to do. This is just showing you 
how I've come to work over the past, oh, what is it now, five years or something doing this. And I still enjoy it for the most part. Just occasionally there are some books that are not quite as much fun. This book has actually been pretty fun to do. I've enjoyed it. I don't know if I got her belt right. Oops. Bill, you maximize that so if the sound went all funny, I'm sorry. See, that's how I usually work. I have the sound up. Ah, oh, I don't, I can't see her melt in this one. But I don't want to look up the other reference that I have at the moment. I'll do that later. When I'm not being watched. Because <laughs> that would take a little longer. And I bet y'all are already bored. But we're almost there. that's that white color too and just the two people up there and I think we're good to go and then I'll show you the page with the lines off so you can see what yours should look like when you're finished uh, I can show you a not good thing right here <laughs> I went out of the lines on her hair and these are things I usually uh, pick up when I'm doing the people at the end, I'll see things that I missed, messed up at the, in the background or, or wherever. Anyway, so I just fill that with the door color and that's fixed. So you don't want to be out of the lines. Those are called stray pixels. <clears throat> And this is going to be pretty long. I really hope that my video program does not freeze on me. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. I thought about recording this on live stream so that um, the cursor could be highlighted and you could see exactly what I'm doing but I tested the quality and the video couldn't see it that well so it probably wouldn't have done any good okay loop 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 Oh, and you might have noticed that um, I'm changing the color. Hold on. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you put the um, blue, wherever this color is, it'll fill only inside the selection. So um, I used the bucket on her neck up here, but it still filled only her um, shirt. So that actually saves some time. So basically wherever you're closest to that has the color you're trying to change, just do a quick fill and it'll fill where you've selected. You want to be fast and accurate. Don't forget accurate. You can't just be fast. Um, worst case scenario, I've had pages take up to 10 hours. That was the worst one ever. It still sticks in my mind. <laughs> I remember what it was. It was a spread of a death lock, I think is the name of it. 
book and that it was like a cityscape and billboards everywhere and people everywhere and this robot guy, I guess, is Deathlock. I don't know who he is. And, um, it was awful and seriously did take me 10 hours. And luckily, the average is about an hour and a half for a page. Um, some of the more detailed can get to be two and a half to three hours, but um, not that often, thankfully, do you get the really detailed stuff. And I personally, I'll go ahead and get into pricing a little bit if, you were try, if you're trying to get into flatting. Um, I personally charge $15 a page. And I think the norm is between 10 and 20. I wouldn't work for less than 10 because your time is more valuable than that, <laughs> I think. And some stuff can take a long time and like $5 a page just, is, just won't cut it. So maybe when you're just um, starting out, you can take a job like that, but don't stick around if you're confident that you're good enough you might just want to practice on your own. Um, you can get a bunch of practice pages at um, uh, DeviantArt. I found that if you actually ask the artists themselves, they'll, they're will they more than uh, likely to send you a high resolution copy of some art uh, to practice on. And you can build up a nice portfolio that way. And as long as you are quick and you meet your deadlines or you tell, uh, you're tell you upfront about how much work you can handle, then if you flat like this, you can stay busy. I can tell you that. Um, so um, when I, I personally charge the um, $15 a page, even on the pages that take forever, because in the end I think it averages out. And... Um, usually you're, you'll get some easy pages thrown in with that batch for that month and it'll just, it'll be okay. Wow, wrong color. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if I'm doing this beard right on this guy. I've never asked him, but he has not complained yet, so. Um, sometimes you'll have to make stuff up. The lines just aren't there, so you just have to sort of. Do your best, and the person coloring coloring it will change it if they need to. So, yeah, I guess that's good enough. I think that's it on this page. So, we are done. And I will turn the line art off and go ahead and zoom in so you can see that there are no holes anywhere and you have the nice crisp lines everywhere. So, again, I'll zoom out and show you the whole page. So that's exactly what you want when you're flatting. So, practice. <laughs> and rewatch this if you need some more help. Or email me. I don't mind answering questions. Uh, sometimes I don't explain things fully enough. And people have needed, to, uh, needed me to clarify something. Oh, one thing that a couple of people have asked me. I'll go ahead and do it right here. Sometimes when your line art, if the default for Photoshop is to come up with your channel in red. So your line art would appear red. So to change that, it would look like your line art would look like this. And you're like, what's going on? <laughs> so you just double click this channel right here and you change the color to black. And that's it. So that was another quick tip, and I think I'm going to go ahead and close this out <laughs> because you all have heard enough of me. I think I explained it well enough that you uh, you can grasp this pretty well. And again, any questions, just let me know. Now I'm going to cross my fingers that this recording works. If you hear this, I guess it did.